everybody. It is 3 p.m. or more like 3.03. .03. Whoops, let me turn you around. Well, there we are. <laughs> it's more like 3.03 .03 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. Hey, Lucy, how are you? Great post and gather. Loved uh, what you were making and thank you so much for uh, inspiring everybody. You're quite the cook. Who knew that you and I had that in common all these years? So it's so great to see you and uh, everybody posting and gather with Nanny Bubby. It's really quite something. So today I am making grilled sea bass and I am actually not grilling it, but I'm pan sauteing it and then I am going to pop it into a 425 degree oven. And the rules are five minutes on the non-skin side, five minutes on the skin side, and then five minutes into the oven. So we're gonna get rolling with that in just a minute. I just have a few announcements to make. Do you wanna see why I was just a little bit late? Cause this is the cutest thing. I think I will see if I can pull this so that you guys can see Biggie. So Biggie, as you know, oh, I can't do it. Wait, hold on. Okay, I know that there's three other people here. I just want to show you. Hold on. Let's see who else is here. Um, well, I don't know. Sometimes it tells me who's here and, and who isn't. Okay, Biggie. So let me show you Biggie. Hey, Biggie. Let me show you what Biggie does. Biggie comes downstairs. Come here, Biggie. Come here, sweetheart. Come on. Come on, little guy. Come on, come show everybody what you do. So Biggie, oh, he can barely walk. Come on, come on. Okay, sit, sit, show everybody what you do. Go ahead, sit, Biggie. I'm just, I'm making him do this right now. But can you see this? He does this, he just sits here at the bottom, hi Frank, at the bottom of the kitchen. And while I am talking to you guys, he just does this. Can you believe this? This is what this dog does to me all the time. And usually he, <laughs> look at him. So I'll give him a treat. Oh, Biggie. Here, let me just show you. Like, this is what he does. He just sits there right at the base of the kitchen. And just, and then he starts whining if I don't feed him. And so what ends up happening is that he comes downstairs about 20 minutes before the show. Here you go, Biggie. There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh my god i know totally hysterical right so he comes down about 15 minutes before the show 20 minutes before the show every day he hears me in the kitchen and he comes running down to see what's going on and he's on chemo three days a week monday wednesday and fridays and he's still sitting there by the way just so you know he's still just sitting there i am just i i mean this is like, there he is, just sitting there, just sitting there waiting. <laughs> Biggie, you are so funny. He has, I mean, he literally can sit like that for hours until I stop what I'm doing in the kitchen and feed him. Well, the thing is, is that he will only take his chemo if I put it inside a White Castle hamburger. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he knows to come downstairs and I give him his little blue pill um, which is a different kind of blue pill than the men take, but this is a chemo blue pill. And um, I have to put it in a little bit of a White Castle hamburger. And then he takes his chemo, and then I have to hand feed him the rest of the White Castle hamburger. Well, he did not come downstairs until like about five minutes till. And I was like, oh my God. So I just stopped what I was doing because if I didn't, he literally would be sitting there like this through the whole show but he, he's not as polite as he just was because he's already eaten. And he goes, mm, mm, mm. and through the whole show, he would be whining. So I thought, well, I need to stop. I need to feed Biggie his White Castle hamburger and give him his chemo so that we can get on with the show. So here we are, we are getting on with the show. So there's a, a few wonderful things that I wanna tell you about besides Biggie, which is uh, Judy Woods won the barbecue contest on Friday, right before we went on Channel 8. Um, we picked her name, and she is a very, very popular and very busy realtor in Las Vegas. Um, and um, 
he, uh, she is um, very busy and she already had an appointment for Wednesday at three o'clock. Sorry, Frank, I was reading what you said and I don't know what you mean by 20 blue or 20 yellow, so you'll have to describe if you can. So anyway, Judy cannot make it on Wednesday. However, and this is the exciting thing, she has a friend whose name is Cheryl Ness, who is married to Chef Vincenzo, straight out of Tuscany. And they met a few years back uh, when she was somewhere, and I don't know the details of this, in Tuscany, and she took a bite of his chocolate cake. And she could not believe how amazing his chocolate cake was. He did not speak English, she did not speak Italian, and they literally fell in love over this piece of chocolate cake, right? It sounds like a, a movie with Diane Ladd in it, right? Um, and um, so they're since married and they since have published a cookbook called Love in a Tuscan Kitchen. They go back to Italy quite frequently and right now they live in Minnesota. So on Wednesday, they're going to be coming on and they're going to be cooking for us uh, biscotti, lavender and ginger biscotti. And um, that's what uh, sounds so absolutely delicious. And because tomatoes are in season right there. Hey, Mark Goldberg, how are you? Nice to see you. Because so many wonderful tomatoes are in season right now, they're going to show us how to make a panzanella salad, which is, you know, so easy to make. And um, they get so wonderfully um, uh, popular and panzanella salad just takes all of that into consideration with whatever bread you have in your house. So the lavender biscotti is, um, I think is her recipe, and the panzanella salad is his recipe. So when they come on, they're going to give away a cookbook and they're going to give away some Tuscan herbs. So they have their own special blend of Italian herbs and so they're gonna give that away. So whatever you do, Make sure you spread the word. Invite your friends to all join us on Wednesday when we interview Cheryl Ness and Chef Vincenzo. And I have to read his last name a few more times so I can phonetically get that right. I just don't want to butcher it right now. So that's what's going on this week. You've all been posting your main dishes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Everybody's doing a great job. This Friday during the show, we will be pulling the winner. Of course, the winners of every week get into a big hat. There should be eight winners at the end of um, our barbecue, our summer barbecue tournament. Eight wonderful winners who in the end will uh, be able to design their own box of uh, Temecula olive oil and I will have it sent to you directly uh, from me, I'm happy to get to get it for you. It's just part of uh, spreading my love like butter, sending you off a box of Temecula olive oil. So it's just so exciting. And um, so that's what's up. So with that being said, let's turn the camera around. And hey, Heather, how are you? And let's get cooking with Danny Bubby. So let's turn here. So I'm making sea bass. And of course, this is something that my sister would never eat because she, she's probably gonna leave the show now because she does not like fish, but many of us do. And these are really hearty, big, beautiful pieces of sea bass. I got them at Whole Foods. And what I'm doing right now is I have been making sure that they are patted dry. I've done this a few times in the last hour, given them a chance to get to moderate room temperature. They still have a bit of a refrigerated chill on them, but you know, they absorb the flavor so much faster and so much better when you let it come and warm up just a little bit more. The meat, the skin, everything about it is just the cells open and it just absorbs the flavors. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to take roasted garlic, olive oil, and because I think that a little bit of light garlic is really good on the um, uh, sea bass. But I want to grab really quickly. There we go. I forgot to get um, teaspoons. And I'm going to put two teaspoons of, um, let's see, Harmony says, 
We have you streaming on TV and your biggest fan is yelling Bubby. So my grandson, that's really awesome. My grandson, he can just say Bubby and he sees me, he hears me. Hi, Jax, hi, it's Nanny Bubby. And he, um, when he hears my voice even, he goes, Bubby, Bubby, which is so cute because nobody's ever called me Bubby. Um, Liv has always said Nanny Bubby as far back as I can remember. So anyway, here we go. Jax, that's his name, Jax C. I call him Mr. President. Hey, Mr. President. So here we go. Here is a teaspoon. And, um, and I got these fabulous little pourers from Temecula Olive Oil Company. And so I think they keep this from... Um, actually dripping and it does it keeps the drip out of the bottle and i love that i'm gonna get more okay there we go okay so there's only two teaspoons of this roasted garlic olive oil and let me show you what i'm going to do with that now i i know a lot of people always say you know spread your seasoning on first but i always say why because if you're going to take this olive oil as an example and you're going to just spread it on very lightly and really two teaspoons teaspoons go a very long way. And because this is garlic olive oil, you know, you don't want too much of it. So I think two teaspoons, that way nothing goes to waste. So we're just gonna very lightly brush this on. I guess about each one of these is getting about, oh, I don't know, like a third of a teaspoon. Okay. And now we are going to add, now we are going to add the salt and pepper. So one more little dip and then all that olive oil is gone. Just right on. There we go. Along the sides as well. So let me turn this on. Turn it on at oh, about medium heat. I'm gonna put this back on the, um, I'm gonna tell you actually a story about this these pourers actually come with a cap and so when they're delivered they're delivered with the cap on and to me it just looked like the very same cap that are on the bottles and so when i looked at that and when you take the whole thing off the cork is on the inside of it so i thought well i just don't need more corks just like this and so i had purchased about six of these previously but the problem was I didn't know that these tops come off to the pour. Okay, I was confused. And so I thought, I don't need those. I don't want them because I already have corks in my olive oil and I threw them away. So that, um, don't make that mistake. If you order these, make sure you know to take the black top off and see that it, there's a dripless pour on the inside. So there's that. Roseanne says, I bought a pour spout for each of my bottles of oil and vinegar. I know, I bought them because I saw that you bought them, Roseanne. And I thought, okay, I wanna buy them. And then when they arrived, I thought, oh, I bought the wrong thing. And then sure enough, it, I finally, it dawned on me for some reason, I went down and pulled that black top off and there it was. So, um, so I just don't want any of you to make that mistake in case you buy the, the non-drip tops. So I am just pouring just a, a little spritz of olive oil on the bottom of that pan. I'm going to take a paper towel. Let me just turn this like this. And I am going to just wipe the excess around and off so that the pan is just very, very lightly coated. Okay, so now let's season this. So we're going to season this first with salt because you can never have enough kosher salt. You can have enough table salt, that's for sure. You can have enough even sea salt, but you never can do too much kosher salt. There's just something about kosher salt that is amazing. And by the way, kosher salt is actually not really kosher. There's no such thing as a kosher salt. It is short for koshering salt. So this salt is used for koshering meats, for koshering um, other things, and that's why it's, and, and so they just shortened it from saying koshering salt to kosher salt, because all salt is actually kosher. All right, so just FYI, it, it, they just took it from a verb to a noun. Now we're putting in some pepper, and you can have too much pepper, that's for sure. 
And now, I think sea bass. There's two things that I like about what I'm gonna do next. Number one, here is, of course, my all-time most favorite, sweet paprika. Inter interesting fact, Harmony says she never knew. I know, it is so interesting. Okay, and then, it, it's because it's, you know, it's just a salt, and it's far less salty than table salt, and that's why you actually really never over salt with kosher salt. It just gets absorbed into whatever it is that you're using. Now, steam is starting to come off this, so it's a perfect time now. So this is, I started to say, sweet paprika, my all-time favorite. Roseanne posted in Gather with Nanny Bubby some sweet paprika that she got at Costco, I think. And it looked amazing, so I've got to get over there and get some. So I'm going to set this timer. Let me turn this on. And I'm going to turn this to five minutes. There we go. And I'm going to hit start. And we are going to take these beautiful sea bass steaks and we are going to lay them. You hear that sizzle? Can you hear that sizzle? Listen. Woo! Listen to that sizzle. I just got smoked. This is the difference when you're not cooking with a hood and a thing. Okay. So, wow. A lot of smoke. I don't want to stand directly over that. And what is coming out of there is you can smell some really strong garlic flavor. It is so fantastic. So I'm going to continue to fan that. Let me grab some paper here. And let me fan this just like we have a hood for a little bit. And um, the sweet smell paprika is from Sir Latab. That's right, Roseanne. That is right. That is right. Okay. I know I, I couldn't remember where it was from. Okay, so I'm just fanning this because I'm cooking. This is my stove. This is my cooktop. This is not, this is an induction burner that I'm able to face this direction. Otherwise, all you'd see is my butt the entire time that I'm cooking, which is not as um, fun to look at as my face, I can promise you. So, <laughs> this is, um, I need a, for something like this, you really do need a fan as, as I first put that in, especially with the garlic on it. So, let me just tell you, as this is cooking, we've got about three minutes and 30 seconds left. I have this cauliflower, this steamed cauliflower. Uh, Roseanne said, it's, uh, I came in a couple minutes late. Where did you get that beautiful sea bass? I got it at Whole Foods. And um, I got it Saturday night, actually. And um, I was going to cook it last night. But it was fresh in Saturday night. Uh, it had just come in an hour earlier. And I knew that if I was gonna cook it, I needed to cook it for all of you. So last night instead, I have to tell you, we had rotisserie chicken. So listen to this. I just wanna, I just wanna tell you about this. I made on my barbecue, I should have taken pictures for the main course, but it was so hot. I don't know, sometimes I lose myself in what I'm doing. But the rotisserie chicken out there, I stuffed it with the aromatics. Listen to what I stuffed this with. I stuffed it with rosemary, I stuffed it with fresh oregano, and I stuffed it with rosemary, oregano, and thyme. Rosemary, oregano, and thyme. And that's it. I didn't put a lemon inside. I didn't put an onion inside, but I did put garlic. I cut the garlic in half, put that inside, tied everything up, stuck the rotisserie on it, I salted it with salt and pepper, kosher salt and pepper, and um, that's all I did. And I want to tell you, Tom and I could not believe it. It was the best tasting chicken that we have ever had. So um, just try taking a whole chicken and stuffing it with aromatics. And that's it, and a little bit of garlic. And, you know, if you wanted, you could actually just use your garlic oil if you didn't want to put garlic or you happen to not have garlic, um, you know, in your kitchen, just suddenly you don't. But what we want to do is, as the five minutes tick tock by, tick tock by, and we've got about a minute to go, I am going um, to make smashed cauliflower. 
So here we go. We've got a very, um, well, how do I say it? We've got a very interactive show about to come up. So from all of you who are live right now, I pulled a bunch of olive oils. Let me show them to you. Okay. There we go. Let me tilt down. Okay. This is roasted garlic. Can you guys see that? Okay. Roasted garlic. So here's fresh jalapeno. That's actually not working. So let me just turn back. Come back to me. Okay. All right. Let me pull them up and let's show them to you because the question is, what do you think would be great? This is going to be a smashed olive uh, cauliflower. And what I want to do is season it with a fabulous tasting olive oil with a little bit of salt and pepper. So, okay, there we go. So now let's, let's turn these first. Let's do that. And also, Roseanne, since you did come in late, we have a big announcement about who oh, this. So you can tell that they cook perfectly because when they turn over that easily. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Move that over. Okay, look at these, look at these. All right, let's set that timer for another five minutes. And then you'll be surprised at how I'm going to bake these. So we've got five minutes on the timer. We're gonna start that. Okay, so now let's talk about how we're going to season the smashed cauliflower because I'm gonna put that, um, yes. So the nice color on the fish, Frank, is because of the sweet paprika. And I always use, well, I use William Sonoma, who's in direct conflict with Sir Latov, right? But this is the sweet paprika that I use from William Sonoma, and I absolutely adore it. But I love the size that Roseanne got at Sir Latov. So we'll have to do a sweet paprika um, throwdown to see which one we like better. So, okay, on top of the smashed cauliflower, we have hickory smoked olive oil. We have Mediterranean herbs, which I love. I love this. We have, well, roasted garlic I don't want to use because I just put that on the fish, so we'll set that aside. Then we have fresh jalapeno, which could be good, right? And Mediterranean, so we've got four. And the other one we didn't look at is fresh basil. So we've got basil, we've got jalapeno, we've got hickory smoked and Mediterranean herbs, okay? Got it? So now, from all of you who are watching, tell me what you think I should put in it. So, Lucy said she's all about the jalapeno, so I would use that one combined with Mediterranean, okay, there's a good idea. I like that idea. What else, everybody? Who's got some good ideas? Who else? Harmony, what do you think if you're still there? Roseanne, what do you think? Frank, what do you think? Frank's always got a good opinion about food, we all know that. So I want to just reaffirm to all of you, Wednesday, Judy Woods is not able to make it because she's a realtor and she's already had an appointment on Wednesday at 3 p.m., so she can't make it, but she has this amazing friend, Cheryl Ness, and her husband, Chef Vincenzo, who wrote a book called Love in a Tuscan Kitchen. It's their love story about how they met over a chocolate cake and neither one of them could speak each other's language. They fell in love, they're now married, they live in Minnesota, though they travel back to Italy all the time. He's a wonderful chef, and they wrote a cookbook, again, Love in a Tuscan Kitchen, and uh, they, they do speaking engagements all over the country. Um, they do a lot of really fun and wonderful things, and so they're subbing for Judy on Wednesday, and they're gonna tell us their love story, they're going to tell us all of, of um, that. So really ask all of your friends to join. Um, it's going to make a great story. And they are giving away one of their cookbooks, Love in a Tuscan Kitchen. And they have a special blend of herbs that they make as well. 
and they're giving away the herbs as well so make sure you tell all of your friends to join and um, and come watch it's gonna be a really 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 fun interview so okay so we've got Mediterranean herbs from Frank Roseanne says she hasn't tried the jalapeno but she likes Lucy's suggestion uh, Megan is here hey Megan Teresa Anderson says Mediterranean and garlic okay but we've got a lot of um, Mediterranean and jalapeno so we've got about a minute and a half to let this go and it's starting to smoke a little bit again I think I'm just going to turn it down and uh, I'm fanning this just so I don't keep coughing over the fish now again once I'm going to actually turn it off now because it's just going to sit here uh, for a little bit and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it but this is what we're going to do we are going to take the let's see Mediterranean what about the hickory smoke anybody for the hickory smoke or no nobody okay I am in love with the hickory smoke and I want to tell you something does any raise your hand if you have an ice cream making machine and you live in Las Vegas so Teresa you cannot um, you can't raise your hand even if you've got one because it doesn't do me any good but I make a stone fruit gazpacho that you could die for I ate it for the first time in Beverly Hills at the Montage Hotel in a restaurant called Georgie's which was named after the very famous chef Jeffrey Zakarian that you see all the time on the Food Network it was named after his son we wandered into the restaurant quite by accident and um, it just said stone fruit gazpacho and I didn't even really understand what stone fruit meant at the time and I ordered it and it was absolutely amazing it just was breathtakingly delicious and let me tell you how they served it they juiced the stone fruit which is plums cherries peaches nectarines um, I think that's just like the four main stone fruits that are out there and then after they juice all of that then they pull out more and they chop it so you've got this wonderful blend of regular just juice along with the um, chunks and the chopped pieces and then they serve that are you sitting down are you sitting down they serve it with a scoop of smoked olive oil gelato Woo! can you believe that honest to god it is it is amazing and so what happened is i wanted to make it i think it was for my son-in-law's birthday the very first time i made it and i needed a juicer so i borrowed harmony's juicer i actually now have my own but i had to borrow her juicer to make it but i did not have an ice cream maker i know right whoa and so what i did is i went into williams sonoma where the people that work there are like my new best friends in life i'm always in there i'm always talking to them and uh one day i was in there and they actually were making um they were making ice cream and i said oh my god guys i i have a favor to ask if i bring you all the ingredients will you actually make my smoked gelato for me and so they did they they said god i'd love to try you know they were interested in trying it themselves so william sonoma made my smoked gelato for me it was unbelievable i was so grateful because i didn't want to spend 350 dollars and we're we're just not big gelato makers you know i knew i'd make it one time and not use it again for another five years um and they were so gracious about it because they want they themselves wanted to taste it and um you have the ice cream attachment okay and for her kitchen aid oh my god all right i'm gonna be right over roseanne you betcha so we're going to do a collaboration with Roseanne. She's going to make the uh, hickory smoked. Is this it? No, that's Mediterranean. Hickory smoked olive oil gelato on top of the uh, stone fruit gazpacho. And I really have to tell you that, um, so I'm leaving on vacation in July. When I get back, I am going to make that. Maybe I can even get it done before I go. So that's very exciting. So, okay. So ready? Here we go. We're going to do a teaspoon of the fresh jalapeno because I really think a teaspoon really goes a long way I'm convinced of it when you just 
pour on, it's just, it's always too much and it gets very soupy. So we're just gonna pour through it. The, there we go. That's one, that's the fresh jalapeno, which believe me is enough. And here is the Mediterranean herbs. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. It really is so much more than you think, and you've gotta be really careful, even when you season salads with it. Okay, so now we are going to take a little bit of pepper, which I open first. There we go. And we are going to take a little bit of salt. Just a little bit, just enough to give it good flavor. And we're gonna continue just to smash it and mix it. And then we are gonna serve the sea bass. I, this one is just a little tough yet. We're gonna serve the sea bass right on the bed of this smashed cauliflower with the Mediterranean herbs and jalapeno. How fantastic is that? So there it is. And of course, we're gonna take a little bit of parsley. We're gonna use parsley. Oh, that smells fantastic. Hey, Brenda Mills. Nice to see you. Here's a little bit of parsley that I've already cut up, chopped up. And so, you know, green, when it comes to something like cauliflower, which is very white and it has very little color, adding green on food, adding red on food, like tomatoes, look at how much more appetizing that looks, right? Isn't that something? So that's always a trick. That's always a trick. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let me tell you what we're gonna do as we put this into the oven, is we are going to take these San Marzano tomatoes. And by the way, I have been watching YouTube video after YouTube video after YouTube video about making um, fresh homemade sauce from fresh tomatoes. And I am convinced that I I finally have figured out exactly what to do and how to do it. And I'm actually gonna run all this by Chef Vincenzo on Wednesday when we interview him. And, um, and then I, I will maybe tell you my secrets that I learned from YouTube, <laughs> which you could too if you wanted. Okay, I'm going to take tomatoes, combination of San Marzano tomatoes how beautiful these eat. these are right from the garden just love these and we are going to scatter these around we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on these as well okay i'm cutting these in fours just so that i can put them in between the sea bass and again we're going to be putting this into the oven just release this from the bottom. This, this is just the best spatula ever. I love it. It just it grabs everything. It makes everything move when you want it to move. It's just absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're still cutting these tomatoes in half. There we go. And these beautiful cherry tomatoes. Now you probably wonder why I am not using my fabulous tomato slicer and the reason why is that these cherry tomatoes that came out of my garden are so huge that they don't fit they don't fit in the tomato slicer so i'm having to do it all on my own isn't that crazy they're just so beautiful so i've got one more summer crop that is coming that'll probably be ready in about a month they're very green right now but depending on how the heat goes boy when that heat came up, it was really something. It was really unbelievable. So these tomatoes are going to roast in the oven and not too much. They're just gonna roast uh, because we're only gonna stick this in the oven um, for about five to seven minutes just to finish cooking all the way through. And I'm not doing it now because we're gonna eat in about an hour from now. So this is like the pre-cook on these. And because I hate to cook my husband's dinner at three o'clock in the afternoon, that doesn't make him happy. But I know you guys are all very patient and understanding of the fact that I do it this way. So thank you so much. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna grab just a little bit of salt. 
because what tomatoes are not fantastic without the salt. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Now, we are also going to take these fabulous organic capers, oh, right there, organic capers, and we are gonna open these which I'm having trouble with. In a minute. Where did that knife go? I'll bring the knives out. I use them all over the kitchen and then Biggie finally went away. He went and got in his bed and laid down or he went upstairs to Tom because Tom keeps cookies upstairs. I do not. So if you want to see my adorable Hi, honey boy, it has been so long since you have joined us. So, so happy to see you. So, if you want to win a cookbook on Wednesday from Chef Vincenzo and Cheryl Ness, Love in a Tuscan Kitchen, you have to join on Wednesday. And please tell all of your friends to join as well. And have them like the page. We are so close to 2,000. So if you can ask um, everybody you know just to like the Nanny Bubby Facebook page, that would be really fantastic because I am told that when we get to 2,000, Facebook starts doing things for us, which would be very nice because they occasionally messed us up, right? So here are some fabulous capers. And I'm just going to take these capers. Look at that. Talk about a little bit of green. Oh, I mean, this is just absolutely gorgeous. Can you guys see this? Look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And then we are going to take some lemons, cut off the ends, and just very thinly slice through these lemons. And press these on top like that. I mean, it's so beautiful, you don't even want to put it in the oven, right? Look at that, it's award-winning. I should actually take a picture of that. I think I can, let me center that up. There we go, here we go. I did, <laughs> I've never done that before. So that was kind of, that was kind of nice to do. Okay, there we go. So that is going to go on top of our jalapeno um, and let's see, Mediterranean herb with the parsley. We'll put a little bit of parsley. I'm gonna put this in a 425 degree oven for about five to seven minutes. And we are going to have a feast. It is beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, honey. It looks great. So let me go back over. Honey, you're, you're, you haven't shown up in a long time, but if you're looking at our group, I just want to tell you that we have the summer barbecue tournament going on. We have had two winners. We're going to have eight winners overall. One of those eight is gonna get pulled out of the box and get their own box of Temecula olive oil, compliments of Nanny Bubby. I'm so happy to be able to do that for the winner. And Wednesday, we are having another contest. So honey, Brenda, Lucy, everybody, get as many people as you can to join us for this interview on Wednesday. Love in a Tuscan Kitchen. Cheryl Ness and Chef Vincenzo, who met in Italy, did not speak each other's language. She went to eat his chocolate cake and fell in love with him over a piece of chocolate cake. It's a beautiful story. They have written a book and um, they are giving away their cookbook, Love in a Tuscan Kitchen, and they are giving away their special Italian herb mix to lucky winners. And so I'm just so excited to have that happen. And Roseanne said that she boasted the Summer Barbecue Tournament information just a few minutes ago. So we realized, so over the last, gosh, week, week, week to 10 days, we've had like 20 or 30 new people join Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group, which is just awesome. And we realized that maybe those people coming in, even though we're all posting about the summer barbecue and everything else, may not realize exactly, you know, what we're doing and they may want to join in. So for those of you who are new, like Brenda and Honey, not really new, new, but you're not here all the time, you will have the rules to the summer barbecue tournament in Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group and we'd love to see your pictures and the things that you love to cook during the summer. Even if you are posting just a picture of a recipe in a book 
or maybe an old note card that used to be your grandmother's, that's perfectly fine, but you only qualify if in the narrative you write why that note card is important to you and when you've eaten it and who gave that note card to you or the recipe in the book, why that recipe, because nobody wants to rewrite an entire recipe from a book that you've used for 30 years, but go ahead and just tell us why that recipe is just so important to you. So that will qualify you for the summer barbecue tournament and you just have to show up on Wednesday and we'll have all of you who show up, we'll have your names in the hat. If you bring somebody who joins in, they just have to type your name and say, honey, honey brought me and then not only will they qualify to win but then honey if you join us you get two entries right you get your own for being here and then your friend and then your friend mentioned your name because you brought her then you're going to get two entries that day is that confusing or does that make sense so anyway those are the rules we'll see you on wednesday tomorrow i think i'm going to do sort of a um a knockoff of roseanne's skewer rosemary recipe and Tanya Murray's um, rosemary skewers with shrimp which is grilled chicken and um, vegetable skewers I just think that sounds really good and hoping they don't burn well we'll check it out maybe we need to soak the rosemary skewers before we put the shrimp on it or rather the chicken in our case so we'll see anyway everybody thank you so much for joining us today and remember, one, two, three, <clears throat> too much smoke. Go out and spread love like butter. Love you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today.